So tell me, y'all, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> but first, intro. Yo, what's good, fam, bam? It is your boy, Jason JV, and I'm saying welcome to a movie review, and yes, you know, something I wanted to do for spooky season, you know what I'm saying? Because I realized, you know, up until this point, I haven't really done any, um, any videos, you know, that would be perfect for the spooky season. So I figured, you know what, hey, why not talk about some horror movies? And we're going to kick things off with the very first Scream movie, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Now, uh, this is, uh, this Scream, uh, was the first Scream that Wes Craven directed that was released back in 1996 and uh, this stars of course Drew Barrymore, David Arquette, uh, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox and of course Skeet Ulrich. Now Scream takes place in a town called Woodsboro and I believe it's in the state of California if memory serves I could be wrong about that. I really like I really lo love this movie because I love how it kicks off man we kick things off with uh, Drew Barrymore uh, in the uh, opening sequence, she is, you know, unfortunately the first victim. Drew Barrymore plays a character uh, named uh, Casey Becker. And uh, we kick things off with her uh, basically getting ready to watch a horror movie. She's about to make some popcorn. Then all of a sudden she gets a phone call from a mysterious stranger who, um, you know, is believed to, to have, have gotten the wrong number by accident, you know. And uh, that phone call, you know, would uh, quickly turn into one of the most frightening phone calls you can ever get in your life. Uh, we have the one of the uh, killers is basically toying around, tormenting uh, Casey Becker, and <clears throat> we also find out that uh, the killer got to her boyfriend, who was tied up in the backyard, and. The killer basically gives her an opportunity to save her boyfriend's life by playing a little game. I mean, a little horror trivia game. He asks her some, some, some questions like, oh, you know, who is the original killer in Friday the 13th? And and when, when she gets that question as to who the original killer was in the Friday the 13th franchise, she gets it wrong. She, uh, she thought it was Jason, but no. If you're a Friday the 13th fan, you know what I'm saying, then you would know, obviously, the killer is not Jason. It's actually his mother. Uh, Pamela Voorhees so because she got that wrong the boyfriend gets killed and then the killer makes his way into the house and unfortunately Casey Becker meets her demise as well you know it's a real sad tragic um, sequence you know what I mean and it still it still gets me to, to this very day because this is one, one of the best if not the best opening sequences in a horror movie um, and it's like, it, it's so sad, so tragic because the parents get home just in time, you know what I mean? To possibly save her life. And unfortunately she is unable to, um, scream, you know, ironically enough. Um, uh, and so the parents couldn't hear her and that is it. She is done. So anyway, so that's how the movie kicks off. You know, we, we think that this girl was going to be the main protagonist of the movie, but come to find out, no, she's just, you know, an appetizer, if you will, um, to really get things going with this movie, to really jumpstart this movie. And then we uh, are introduced to the main characters of the story. We're introduced to uh, Billy Loomis, who is played by Skeet Ulrich. We are introduced to Sidney Prescott played by Nev Campbell. Shout out to Nev Campbell. Uh, I really love, I, I feel like they did a phenomenal job casting her as Sydney Prescott. Sydney Prescott is easily one of my favorite final girls of all time uh, in a horror franchise. And then of course we're introduced to um, Stu Mocker, who is <clears throat> the boyfriend of Sydney's friend Tatum, Tatum Riley who is being played by Rose McGowan. Let me go ahead and grab my notebook here because I did take some notes because I, I know there's going to be some, some cast members that I'm going to forget about as far as like uh, the characters that they, that they play. 
<clears throat> and so they're all they're, they're all learning about how okay Casey Becker was, was basically t uh, taken out by you know this this serial killer and they're all uh, trying to figure out okay well who 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 could have done this this killing because uh, really the only one who had um, a motive in doing the uh, killing is Stu Mocker because apparently Stu Mocker uh, who is being played by Matthew Lillard uh, apparently he was dating Casey and I guess she dumped him or and whatnot so you know definitely could definitely a, a motive there you know reason enough for someone like him to do such a thing um, <clears throat> And then we also learn about another character who was introduced in this movie, who goes by the name of Cotton Weary, who is being played by, and I, I'm probably gonna butcher his name, uh, but I hope I'm saying I'm saying this right. Played by Liev Schreiber, if not Liev Schreiber. Uh, <clears throat> again, I'm not sure how to properly pronounce that name, so I do apologize if I got it wrong. <clears throat> and uh, it is believed that he is the one who murdered. Uh, Sydney's mother uh, a year prior from the events that kick off here so apparently the 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 murder spree from this killer um, has been going on for uh, roughly around a year and uh, it is believed that Cotton Weary had murdered Sydney's mother who uh, Sydney's mother who had left uh, Sydney and her father behind for reasons and so uh, more on him in, in, a, in a bit because while it is believed he is the one that murdered Sydney, Sydney's mother, we find out later on that that could possibly not be the case. It, he may have been set up, if you will. We're also introduced to a character that Jimmy Kennedy plays, who goes by the name of Randy. Randy is, and I love, and I love the uh, Randy character because he is the horror, the resident horror nerd um, in, in his group of friends. Um, he is someone that you know that is really into the horror horror movie franchises. Um, or horror movies in general and uh, he believes that there are a set of rules that this uh, this mysterious serial killer is, is playing by he thinks that, that the serial killer is playing by the rules of these classic hor horror um, franchises like Halloween um, Friday 13th Nightmare on Elm Street he thinks that this serial killer is someone who's being influenced by, by this by this movie and if that's the case, then there are certain rules that you must follow. Like, uh, oh, you, you can never drink. You can't have sex. You can never say, oh, I'll be right back because you won't be back. <laughs> so, um, which I find uh, very, very interesting. And then uh, later on, we're also introduced to David Arquette's character, uh, Dwight Dewey Riley, who is the brother of Tatum Riley. <clears throat> And uh, I'm not gonna lie. Upon first viewing, I thought uh, Dewey was, was the killer. And honestly, I this would have been the greatest plot twist at that time because uh, Dewey is a sheriff deputy. You know what I'm saying? So you would so you would think you know what I mean? That would be uh, that would be a, a, a nice twist. You know what I mean? Have a sheriff deputy be one of the uh, killers, because you know who would ever suspect a sheriff or sheriff deputy, anyone in law enforcement. Um, <clears throat> more on that in another screen review that I plan on doing. And then we're, uh, we're we're also introduced to another character, the school principal, who is being played by Harry Winkler. For those of you who don't know who Harry. Winkler is. Some of you may know him from Happy Days as the Fonz. A and um, unfortunately, he meets his demise at the school by one of the killers. And uh, yeah, man, <clears throat> this movie—it's it, crazy. It's—it's it's, it's got so many um, awesome plot twists in it. You know what I mean? Just when you think you got the killer figured out, the movie—it it really toys with you it really plays with you you know what i mean when it comes to trying to figure out who these killers are uh, as a matter of fact there is a scene in this movie excuse me where sydney is attacked at her home and this was after uh we meet her father uh, mr prescott 
who is apparently going away on a on a business trip. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, Sydney get, she gets attacked in her own home by by the uh, killer. The killer is now picking her as a target. Uh, she was able to evade the killer. She was able to fight him off, and um, <clears throat> almost immediately, uh, Sydney's boyfriend Billy Loomis, uh, again being played by Skeet Ulrich, he uh, uh, he shows up to her house. He um, you know makes his way into the house via through Sydney's window and of course you know like any good boyfriend would he is hugging her he is comforting her and reassuring her that yo he is there you know basically being her protector and whatnot and then uh, he drops his phone which leads Sydney into, into thinking that he may be the killer <clears throat> and therefore she makes her way that down and therefore she uh runs away from him makes her way down downstairs in the house and <clears throat> we run and that's when she runs into uh dewey again being played by david arquette who's holding the uh for some reason he's holding the ghost face mask up high like as if he's trying to show somebody like as if he's trying to show her so she gets uh spooked by the ghost face mask which spooks dewey and uh <clears throat> And this is when they come up with the idea of having uh, Sydney stay at <clears throat> at the Riley's residence uh, with Dewey, Tatum, and their mother. And meanwhile, uh, Billy, her boyfriend, is is being arrested because you know he's the one there with with the phone, but it is believed that he is not the one who made the mysterious call to Sydney prior to her being attacked. Which is something I forgot to mention, so that's my bad. And so he goes through the process, you know, of being interrogated at the precinct. He's being uh, held for uh, in police custody for questioning and what have you. And um, he was able to prove that he wasn't the one who attacked Sydney, so they let him go. And so uh, going back to uh, Matthew Lill Matthew Lillard's character, if I can speak, um, his character Stu Stu decides that hey man he, uh, he's gonna throw a party at the house at his house and uh he invited sydney of course sydney tatum everybody basically you know all the friends you know gathered up at his house and um <clears throat> where's gonna be you know some loud music some drinking and some horror movie viewing and this is where everything comes to a head um and we find out um <clears throat> who the uh, killer and or killers plural are so uh, up until this point um sydney and billy have been talking about you know when are they finally uh, finally are finally gonna get intimate with each other uh in the bed and sydney decides well since billy is not the killer I guess the night of that party, that would be the perfect time to do it. So Sydney decides, okay, she's gonna <clears throat> give her virginity to uh, Billy Loomis, and she's gonna later regret that because the killer shows up to the house and is slaughtering her friends left and right. Tatum uh, meets her in when she goes when she goes to get her friend some beer. The killer meets her in the garage and she thinks it's someone playing a prank come to find out that's not the case and so she's being attacked and she's trying to get away um, she tried to make her way out through the big garage door unfortunately it was closed so the only way to really get out was I guess they had a, a cut out door for like a, a, a pet a family pet dog cat something um, so she uh, tried to squeeze her way through the the um, the small exit and unfortunately she was snagged and go face act um, activates the garage door <clears throat> which I guess didn't have a sensor because I mean if you're because now I know nowadays if you try to use a garage door and there's someone there in, in the way of the sensor that garage door is not moving so I guess back during the mid 90s I don't know maybe they didn't have those kind of sensors yet uh, but anyway so 
she's lifted up in the garage door and she ends up getting crushed um, by the, the, the uh, frame for the garage door or at least the doorway of the garage door um, probably one of the most creative deaths in horror that I've ever seen in my life and uh, we get to the point now where it's it's just down to um, to Sydney Randy <laughs> Billy and Stu and this is where we find out because uh, with all the killing going on Randy to start to suspect Stu and Sydney is not sure if it's if it is either Randy or Stu that could be the killer so she decides that because they were both outside the house and uh, she's like man you know what screw you both both of you can, can stay out in the cold so she closes the doors on, on them and basically locks them out or so she she's led to believe um, Billy however he was attacked uh, earlier on in the bedroom after he and um, Sydney uh, did their deed and come to find out because you know somehow he survived the attack from Ghostface and he takes a, a huge tumble down down the stairs and um, <clears throat> and he is you know trying to trying to pull it together he's trying to hold on he's trying to survive and uh, he opens up the front door he lets Randy in and Randy's basically, you know, is going crazy and telling him, yo, uh, Stu, I think he's lost his mind. I think he's the one that's, that, that, you know, doing all the killings and whatnot. And then we find out that Billy is actually one of the killers because he actually shoots Randy, uh, almost killing him. And then that's when it all comes out. Billy is one of the killers. <clears throat> and then Sydney ends up running into Stu who she thought was uh, the as much of an innocent bystander as she was, come to find out, nope, Stu, who pulls out a voice changer to reveal that he is the other killer. And uh, his motive, as far as why he's doing, as why he's helping Billy out, is he's just doing this just for shiggles. He's doing it just for fun. Which, which makes him, in my in my book, the uh, scariest ghost face ever. Because to me, the scariest villain is a villain that has no motive. They, they just do what they do because they enjoy it. And uh, with Billy, though, we find out that, you know, he's basically got mommy issues. You know, because, again, his mom abandoned his family. And reason being is because, I guess, his father had an affair with Sydney's mother. So there's there's that whole deal, um, <clears throat> and their plan was to make it seem like uh, Sydney's father, going back to Sydney's father, who was supposed to be away on a business trip, <laughs> come to find out he never went on this business trip. He was kidnapped by both Billy and Stu, and that and that he was basically locked up in Stu's uh, closet. So they brought him out, and their plan was to make. Uh, Sydney's father seemed like he went crazy like because uh, the day that this party takes place it's a it's a one year anniversary from when Sydney's mother had died and they were going to make it seem like you know um, Sydney's father has never been the same ever since you know the passing of his wife so therefore he snaps he goes crazy and takes it out on Sydney by murdering her and then murdering himself or or excuse me, um, him getting into it with both Billy and Stu. Billy and Stu are going to make it look like like they were attacked by him, but somehow they survived and they killed him. You know, in order to to survive. And unfortunately, you know, neither Sydney or her father would, would make it. And they were going, so they were trying to get away with it. Well, come to find come to find out that that's not going to happen. Uh, Sydney was able to find a way to, to turn the tables and was able. To um, was able to take out Billy uh, thanks to uh, Courtney Cox's character uh, Gail Weathers, and not only um, was she able to take out Billy, but she, of course, um, Sydney on her own was able to take out uh, Stu via the uh, TV, <laughs> via a, a TV set, 
uh, that they were watching uh, a horror movie on. It was Halloween that they were watching. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, man. Um, I got to say, Scream, the first one, awesome movie. One of my favorites. Like I said, man, I got to give props to this cast. I got to give props to the casting department for casting uh, this great group of talent. I think everyone here did, did a phenomenal job. I love uh, Meth Campbell's character, Cindy Prescott. Again, one of my favorite final girls of all time. Um, I definitely find myself rooting for her um, <clears throat> in, in this movie. And um, Ski Ulrich, I think, yeah, man, they they did a perfect job casting him as one of the killers. I mean, he definitely played that role. He definitely played that role very, um, very sinister-like, if you will. Uh, very, very menacing. And um, Matthew Lillard, I mean, man, him as Stu, I mean, very well done. Uh, very funny in this movie, too. I, I like, I especially like the part at the end, well, towards the end, when you find out that they are the killers. Uh, him and, because again, him and Billy were supposed to make it look like that they, they were attacked by Sydney's father. So they were cutting each other and... I guess Billy, he got a little, little carried away with the wounds that he was supposed to put on Stu to the point where Stu started bleeding out the mouth, so therefore he knew that, okay, yeah, he was dying a slow, painful, agonizing death, and uh, one of my favorite parts is when uh, is when, when Sydney flips the script and she's calling them using the voice changer, uh, basically using their tactics against them. Um, <laughs> Freaking Stu, or Billy rather, throws the phone at, at Stu, and Stu's all like, man, you hit me with the freaking phone, you dick! <laughs> and then, uh, he picks, and, and so Stu picks up the phone, and he's trying to talk to Sydney, like, 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 uh, hello? Did, did you really call the police? <clears throat> and Sydney's asking him, like, you know, oh, Stu, 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 what, what's, what's your motive? What, what are you gonna do? And, uh, he basically tells her like like peer pressure and before he can finish his motive uh billy you know grabs the phone and uh is and is basically threatening to get sydney and then he gives the phone back to Stu. and Stu. then this is when Stu asks sydney did you really call the police and she when she confirmed it she did i now i i originally thought Stu told her my mom and dad are gonna kill me or you know what i mean because to me that would have made sense that that was one of those jokes that that made sense but it turns out he actually says um uh, my mom and dad are gonna be so mad at me which i didn't think would was, was that was as funny i don't know i don't know if it's a mandela effect or if that's just you know me just remembering that part wrong i don't know but I think it would have been funnier though if Stu would what I said, my mom, my mom and dad are gonna kill me because that's how you know kids back in the '90s. That's how we used to talk whenever we, we would get in trouble. You know what I mean? We would always say, "Oh, my mom's gonna kill me" or "My dad's gonna kill me." It was never literal. It was always you know metaphoric. You know what I mean? For like, oh, you know, we're in for a real serious punishment. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but but yeah. I don't know. I, I just felt like uh, my mom and dad are gonna kill me. That line would have been a much better line. I think it would have really helped that scene. It would have made it, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, more funny in my my opinion. But that's just me though. Uh, of course, so Stu sitting there in pain. He's there's another line he said to Billy too. He's like, dude, I think you overdid it, man. I think I'm dying over here. <laughs> Oh man, it's just him sitting there crying and whining because he he he's fearing the worst. He thinks he's not gonna make it. Man, it's just yeah, is the Stu Marker character is such a funny character, such a hilarious character, a crazy creepy character. Because again, he has no real motive, but he but also a very funny character. I think uh, Matthew Lillard did, did a good job as Stu. Um, and then Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers. Man, she does a good job making you not like Gil Weathers, at least at first, uh, because she comes off at, cause, uh, her, her thing is that, uh, I guess she decided to write a story about the death of Sydney's mother and she was trying to cash in on that. So she comes off as like this, this clout chaser, if you will. 
um, you know, basically just trying to profit off of the uh, story of the of the murders that are going on in Woodsboro, and um, <clears throat> while she's also you know trying to make it as a news reporter, and uh, so yeah, she's one of those um, opportunistic type of people, you know what I mean? Just just again chasing that cloud and whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, Courtney Cox I think did, did a great job, you know what I mean making you hate that character at first but then um have her you know help sydney save the day by taking out the two killers though i thought wow that's that, that was phenomenal you know what i mean they did they did a great job with that character as well everyone really did, did a great job i really like uh, david arquette in this movie as as dewey um he came off uh very very likable and uh yeah man so yeah, first scream, y'all. I, I really love this movie. If I had to rate it, I'm giving it uh, five kitchen knives uh, out of five. It's a solid, solid horror movie. You know what I mean? It's really a great horror movie, especially to watch during the, the Halloween season. You know what I'm saying? Um, highly, highly recommend it if you're a horror fan. <clears throat> and um, if you're if you're into the, to the uh, Scream movies and you started watching the newer Scream movies before really watching the older ones, highly recommend that you go back and watch the older movies, especially the first one, because it is just so damn good. And I can't say enough good things about it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite movies to watch during the Halloween season. Um, I just picked up the entire series on Blu-ray, and um, and I and I don't regret it, man. <clears throat> I would say uh, it's up there with with the big three. I would say now that it's got more sequels under its belt, uh, this should be a a big four. The, it, I think the the horror slasher instead of referring to it as the big three, we should be referring to it as the big four, and Scream should be that 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 big fourth. You know what I mean? Up there with the Halloweens, the Friday Thirteenths, and um, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, and that's pretty much. Um, my, my thoughts on this movie man fantastic movie again I can't recommend it enough go check it out um, yeah really hope you guys enjoyed this movie review uh, if you did y'all know the deal y'all know how to support the channel this is not a replacement of any other content that I do here um, I'm still doing my, my reactions slash reviews and um, also more music will be coming so definitely look forward to that this is just something that I wanted to do again for the Halloween season you know what I mean talk about some horror movies um, Right now, it's mostly going to be just about the Scream franchise. <clears throat> I will try to get more um, horror reviews in because I did get uh, more horror movies. I did get the uh, the Horror Grinch parody movie that's called The Mean One. I do want to talk about that one. Uh, and I don't know. Or, and I might talk about it hope, maybe sometime before Halloween. The day of Halloween, or I may wait till Christmas, because being that it's technically a Christmas horror movie, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. It is your boy Jason JV. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course subscribe. Do all the YouTube thing things. That would be very much appreciated. And um, don't forget to check out the merch. Shout out to everyone that's been subscribed, that's been engaging with the content, and shout out to everyone that's been buying merch as well. Um, forever grateful for all those things. And uh, yeah. Till next one, y'all have a blessed one. I catch y'all later. All right, and, and may y'all have a happy and safe Halloween. Peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, what's up with you, Jason JV? What up, Jason JV? I'm just sending love, peace, and blessings to you, Jason. You are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, G? My name is Jimmy Patrick. I'm going to have to do that to do it on the street. Please say what's up to me. Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, if you're sad, if you're sad, if you're happy. I'm going to be too happy. I'm going to be expecting shit. It's like doing curves all the time. So you ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe. Tap the little bell. Turn on the notifications. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.